This is Chris Overholt, and this is a module for heat release rates in FDS. This is part of the 3D fire modeling course at UHD. And in this module, uh, I'd like to give an overview, and I'd like to go over how to input heat release rates into FDS. And we're going to look at a few different ways that you can do this. Uh, first is the simple and uh, easiest method is the constant heat release rate. Uh, we're going to look to how to do that over a varying uh, burner area. Uh, then we're going to look at how to input time varying heat release rates uh, if we want to input a design fire curve. And then we can also look at how to make uh, T squared heat release rate curves. Uh, and finally the last thing I want to do is how to look uh, how to use FDS output to verify that the heat release rate curve uh, that you're getting is what you expected it to be. So uh, with that I want to do a little bit of setup uh, in the beginning here. And uh, first thing I want to do is uh, I want to make a few new folders on the desktop here uh, just to organize um, our three cases. So I'm going to make three new folders. The first um, I'll name constant. The second folder I'll name variable. And the third folder I will name t squared. And in these folders, I want to put the room fire uh, example case that comes with Fire Dynamic Simulator. So I've already installed uh, FDS on this computer. So I'm going to navigate to the folder uh, where that is to that example file. So if I go to my computer and the C drive, I can go into Program Files, uh, FDS, FDS5, Examples, and Fires. And in this folder, there's an FDS input file called roomfire.fds and that's the file I want to get. It uh, comes with the FDS installation. So I want to copy that file by going to edit copy and then I just want to paste that file into each of these three folders. So I'll open constant edit paste and same thing for variable edit paste and finally same thing for T squared edit paste. So I now have that uh, default room fire case in all of these folders. So um, I'll go ahead and continue with the description of burners in FDS. Uh, burners are created in FDS using two basic lines. First is a surface line, um, and the second is a vent line. So this surf, uh, we'll look at the surf line first, and you see that it has an, an ID of burner and an HRRPUA, which is a heat release rate per unit area of 1,000. And these units are in kilowatts per meter squared. So it's energy per unit area. Um, note that the ID here doesn't have to be called burner or fire. It could be called whatever you like. Um, what actually tells FDS to invoke the mixture fraction model um, and, and create a fire is HRRPUA. That's the important parameter in this name list. Uh, it's also important that the surf ID matches here on the vent line, uh, so you'll see they're both named burner. The second line is the vent line, and this is what actually prescribes the uh, geometry for the vent. So in this case, uh, there's six numbers. We have 0 to 1 in the x direction, 0 to 1 in the y direction, so we have a 1 by 1 meter burner, which is 1 meter squared, and it's located on a plane in 0, 0. Uh, this could also be uh, at some elevation, uh, but since those two numbers match in the z direction, it's going to be a plane in the z direction. Uh, so we have the XB and then we have the surf ID burner. So this tells it to look for the surf that has the ID burner and use that, um, use those parameters for the vent. So with those two parameters, we're going to look at uh, how to create a constant heat release rate. That's the example shown here. And then uh, look at some more complex cases. So. For the constant heat release rate, um, that's actually what's specified in the room fire burner on the sofa by default. Uh, again, HRRPUA stands for heat release rate per unit area. This is very important to remember that it's in kilowatts per meter squared uh, so that you don't make an error when you're inputting uh, your heat release rate into FDS. So be sure that when you're putting in your heat release rate per unit area that you do account for the area of the burner. Because even though you input a, a fixed HRPUA, as you change the burner area, you'll actually change the amount of energy that's coming out of it. 
So, for example, uh, the default case, uh, the default room fire case, um, has these two lines shown here. So we have a surf ID burner, uh, HRPUA of 1,000 kilowatts per meter square, and it has a color associated to it, so it's easy to see in the model. Uh, we have the vent XB here, so 2.5 to 2.6, that's 0 0.1 meters in the X direction. 4.3 to 4.4, that's also 0 0.1 meters in the Y direction. And then you'll notice it's elevated, um, but those two numbers match, so it's at 0 0.6 meters high uh, located on the top of the couch. The surf ID is burner here, which matches the previous line, um, and there's a comment afterwards um, saying it's an ignition source on the couch. So, again, if we look at the area of this burner as specified, it's 0 0.1 by 0 0.1 meters. Multiply those out, and you get 0 0.01 meters squared. So, for the two lines shown above, an input heat release rate per unit area of 1,000 kilowatts per meter squared will actually result in a heat release rate of 1,000 multiplied by that area, we get 10 kilowatts. So in this case, um, we have 10 kilowatts. And I'll go ahead and open that constant uh, folder. And if I double click this, I have it set to open in Notepad. And if we scroll down, we have the surf ID here. There's that burner line. It's talking about the, uh, there's the heat release rate per unit area. And if we go down a little bit in the file, we see the vent line here. And this is exactly as shown before. So it's 0 0.1 by 0 0.1 meters. So the heat release rate coming out of this burner is going to be about 10 kilowatts. So there's that case. And if we look a little bit more into some examples of modifying these lines, let's say we wanted to change the heat release rate to 400 kilowatts, but we wanted to leave the burner alone as 0 0.1 by 0 0.1 meters. So with those same two lines, uh, we so we're going to leave this vent line fixed because this tells the geometry of the burner. What we want to change is the HRPUA, but we don't want to type 400 there because again that's going to result in uh, the wrong heat release rate actually coming out of there. So the way to actually calculate that is 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 pretty simple. If we open up a calculator here, uh, so if we want to get 400 kilowatts out, we can divide that by 0 0.01, which is the area, and we get 40,000. So in this case, we would actually, if I go back to that uh, input file, we could actually go up to, we would leave the vent line alone, but we would actually change uh, this value here to 40,000. And that sounds high, but again, this is being multiplied by a 0 0.01 meter squared burner. So it's going to end up being 400 kilowatts total coming out of that burner. Now, if we look at another case, um, we want to change the heat release rate to 800 kilowatts, and we also want to change the burner to 0.2 by 0.2 meters. So we're going to be changing both lines in this case, so we need to pay attention to both values. So in order to do this, if I go back to the room fire, uh, case, first thing I want to do is calculate the HRRPUA that I'm going to use. So I'll divide 800 by, in this in this case, um, it's going to be, actually let me first calculate the area. So it should be 0.2 multiplied by 0.2 gives 0 0.04 for the area this time. So now I can do 800 divided by 0 0.04 gives 20,000. So I should be using 20,000 on this line here and now when I go down to the other line I'll actually want to change the geometry so if I change this to 2.4 to 2.6 that's 0.2 meters in the x direction if I change this to 4.2 to 4.4 that's 0.2 meters in the y direction so at this point I have a 0.2 by 0.2 uh, meter square burner um, and it has a total heat release rate of 800 kilowatts given the, the inputs that I've changed here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and, and run this FDS case. So I'm going to save my edits and proceed to run. So I can go to Start Menu, Run, type CMD to get to the command prompt. Now I can type CD Desktop, 
and I can type cd constant to get into that directory. If I type dir, there's roomfire.fds. So at this point, I can type fds5 roomfire.fds and hit enter, and that case will run. So I'll go ahead and let that case run because we'll use it at the end to verify that we have the correct heat release rate uh, in FDS. So that case is running. Uh, uh, now I want to talk about uh, how to input a variable heat release rate or a time varying heat release rate curve. So in the figure on the right here, you see on the x axis is time, and the y axis is heat release rate, and I have various points specified. Uh, that may show the heat release rate of some burning object where you have a growth, you have a peak heat release rate, uh, then the decay stage. So if I want to input this into FDS, I can do that uh, using the example code shown below. And I like to use a spreadsheet to help me out to generate uh, the different uh, values that I need. So we see the same two surf and vent input lines uh, here, and we have the heat release rate per unit area, this actually represents the peak heat release rate value, so that's the first thing we should be aware of. And we see an additional parameter here, ramp underscore Q equals fire ramp. And this fire ramp should match a ramp ID, uh, which has times and fraction values specified. So the way this works is a ramp ID is basically the, represents the different points in time with some function from 0 to 1, where 0 is 0 and 1 is the HRPUA. So uh, if we, if I open up Excel, I'll show you how you can generate these uh, fraction values fairly easily um, and have, and put, we'll put them into the room fire uh, case. So if I open up Excel, and the first thing I want to do is have a column for the time and heat release rate. And this represents uh, my input design uh, design fire. So if I have times 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50, and the corresponding heat release rates I've chosen are 0, 10, 50, 40, 10, and 0. So if I make a simple plot of this heat release rate design curve, I'll see something similar to uh, the design curve that was on the slide here. So 